Grade 9 Macbeth Exemplar Essay and Walkthrough to the Question. So, in this video we're going to look at timing and mark breakdowns, the three assessment objectives, my grade 9 approach to the question, and looking and analysing a grade 9 exemplar essay. Just note, I made this video from a suggested um, comment, so feel free to comment down any more video suggestions that you want and I'll make videos on them. So let's look at the timing and mark breakdowns. So overall you're going to have 34 marks for this question and four marks of that will be for SPAG. For the whole of paper one you have one hour and 45 minutes and therefore you have 55 minutes on this section. So for this question you're going to need to spend roughly five minutes planning and 50 minutes writing. There are four assessment objectives for the whole of paper one, however in this question you'll only be assessed on assessment objective one, two and three. So let's look at assessment objective one. This is being able to read, understand and respond to texts in a critical way, using quotations and trying to develop some sort of idea. Normally you'll be doing this unconsciously so you don't have to worry too much, but here's a grade nine tip. Do not keep your line of argument the same throughout your essay, as the writer most likely doesn't repeat the same idea, but goes on a journey. For example, if the writer Shakespeare is talking about the theme of um, monarchy and being crown and power, his opinion on power changes as and the value of power changes throughout Macbeth, and that is the journey that you need to go on. Try not to stick to the same one throughout your whole essay and try to avoid using giant chunks of text as quotes. Use small quotes that you can have a lot to say about. Assessment objective two. Now this is quite a lot of the GCSE and you have to analyse the language, form and structure used by a writer to cr create the meanings and effects. So what you're going to do is try to analyse both the explicit, which is the obvious meaning, and the implicit, the discrete, deeper meaning. So, for example, the quote by Lady Macbeth, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent underneath. So Shakespeare's use of contrast between the natural nouns flower and serpent is the mere depiction of Lady Macbeth's persuasion of manipulation. Furthermore, this possibly is a further attempt to, to redefine masculinity through advising her husband as she forcibly instructs him to look dainty and fickle like a flower with dangerous Machiavellian schemes despite his overwhelming strength both physically and morally. So what we're arguing here is that on the surface you can see that this is an image of Lady Macbeth's m manipulation. However, beneath this we can see she is trying to emasculate her husband and redefine masculinity as being manipulative as opposed to physical strength. Assessment objective three. So this is being able to show and understand the relationship between context. So here are two grade boosters for this one they must be relevant. Do not think that you have to talk about women in a certain era for every single essay. Try to be variable and try to, instead of saying the original audience, say the contemporary audience, which means the audience that would be watching at that time it was made. Also avoid generalization. Avoid making sweeping generalizations as we spoke about as all Elizabethan women. Try to make specific, specific, sophisticated links between relevant contextual factors and the question. Whenever you're trying to include context, always remember and ask yourself, is it in any way related to the question? And if it isn't, don't include it. Now moving on to how to answer the question. So what I would suggest is start with the extract, find three points relative to the question, tell what you notice about it. Find what you notice about it. Now normally the points should be chronologically because this is usually the best approach, however if you have formulated your own approach then go for that one. Then for each point that you've made about the extract, use it as a platform to discuss wider events or happenings in the entire text. And then use your conclusion as an area to discuss the journey of the theme or character you're being asked about. Because as we said, it's unlikely that there would be no development whatsoever on the specific thing. Finally, let's look at the grade 9 model answer.
broken down into three assessment objectives. So here is the introduction. So in the introduction, firstly, I would suggest talk about the extract, then the text, and then the context, all in relation to the theme. So this question is, starting with the extract from Act 5, Scene 1, explore how Shakespeare presents the character of Lady Macbeth. So in Macbeth, Shakespeare presents ambition as the tragic flaw that causes Macbeth's downfall. In the extract, Lady Macbeth questions Macbeth's lack of ambition, and she resolves to persuade him to seize the throne. Later, Shakespeare shows how M Macbeth's ambition is encouraged by the witch's prophecy and by his own desire for power, as we see him transformed from a loyal subject to a murderous tyrant. Performed before King James the Fifth. King James VI and the I in 1606, the play suggests, presumably to the satisfaction of the king, that ambitious re rebels against divinely appointed kings should not should expect gruesome punishment. Sorry, just with the question, it's actually the theme of ambition, not the character of Lady Macbeth. That was an actual trick to see if you were able to spot whether this was actually answering the question. Now, there is a key and it's all colour coded because I've broken it down for you into what is A01, A02, A03, so it gives you some visual examples. Moving on to paragraph one. In Lady Macbeth's soliloquy, Shakespeare presents ambition as something that Macbeth lacks, suggesting that Lady Macbeth aims to manipulate Macbeth to take action. Alone, Lady Macbeth speaks her true thoughts aloud, fearing that Macbeth is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way to the throne. The milk symbolism is an insult, suggesting that Lady Macbeth feels that her husband is too feminine, and you can also add to that, perhaps too, like a child, helpless. Ambition here is clearly linked to ideas about masculinity and the contemporary audience may well have been shocked to see a female character transgressing traditional stereotypes of female behaviour. Lady Macbeth then argues that ambition requires illness in order to bear fruit. She appears to believe that masculine cruelty is necessary to be great and indeed later calls on supernatural power to unsex her and make her cruel. This is perhaps an echo of the Machiavelli notorious advice to princes that vice should be in order to get and retain power. Lady Macbeth concludes by resolving to give Macbeth her qualities through the power of her rhetoric. By the way, if you don't know what rhetoric means, it's the ability of persuasion. I may pour my spirits in thine ear. The metaphor presents persuasion as a fluid, filling Macbeth's head with something unnatural and deadly, almost like poison. Paragraph 2. Although Lady Macbeth dismisses Macbeth's lack of ambition, Shakespeare presents ambition as an important motivation for Macbeth. Soon after meeting the witches, Banquo notices that Macbeth is wrapped and Macbeth seems to be already imagining his royal future. Later, when Duncan proclaims Malcolm as his heir, Macbeth reveals his black and deep desires. Whispering to himself, he uses imagery of darkness to emphasise how disturbing his ambition is and to reveal his plan to overleap Malcolm. This access to Macbeth's thoughts set up a dramatically ironic set scene where Macbeth simultaneously proclaims his loyalty and signals his treachery. However, Macbeth is never firm in his resolve and almost abandons the murder, noting that his vaulting ambition overleaps itself. Here he imagines ambition as a horse failing to jump a fence. This wavering end by, is ended by Lady Macbeth's mockery. Wouldst thou live a coward? And we see that without her ambition. Macbeth's ambition may have withered away. This reflects the source. The Chronicles of Scotland, in which the killings of Duncan is a product of both Macbeth's ambition and Lady Macbeth's unquenchable desire to be queen. Shakespeare later presents ambition as the character flaw that causes Macbeth's downfall. Upon becoming king, Macbeth mourns his fruitless crown. 
The ambition is further a dynasty, expressed using metaphors of infertility, causing him to plot to have Banquo and his son Fleance, prophesied by the witches to get the kings, killed. Their continued existence eats away at Macbeth, and he exclaims, full of scorpions in my mind. This metaphor suggests that Macbeth is poisoned by his ambition and that it causes him pain, and indeed when Macbeth learns that Fleance has escaped, he cries out, Then comes my fit again. This is the beginning of Macbeth's downfall. Later, as the army advances, Macbeth reaches a moment of nihilistic realisation, proclaiming that life is a tale told by an idiot, signifying nothing. Shakespeare shows that ambition lends only to destruction and meaningless. Meaninglessness. The arrival of the rightful heir represents a return to the correct measure, time and place, and perhaps reflects the contemporary discussions about the divine right of kings. Macbeth's ambition causes him to outrage God and he receives his just punishment. You can definitely see a clear political message that Shakespeare's sending across. And finally, the conclusion. Thus, in Macbeth, Shakespeare presents ambition as a disruptive force that undermines duty and loyalty, usurps legitimate leaders and leads, ultimately to the death of the usurper. Moreover, ambition is presented as an illness and as a character flaw that brings out the tragic hero destruction. Then, as in many other tragedies, a new equilibrium of peace and good order dawns. Though 21st century audiences may have a more positive view of ambition, the play still resonates as a powerful depiction of how excessive ambition and absolute power can corrupt previously virtuous people. If you want to grade 9 in GCSE French, English Literature, English Language or GCSE Religious Studies, then why not subscribe to Know All for GCSE? You won't regret it.